this and color. And in today's video, I would like to demonstrate the high precision skin tone correction workflow that is possible with the new version two of my Hue compressor. And I'm gonna demonstrate this on several shots and with increasing difficulty so that we can see how far we can push this tool and still get clean results. So let's start with this one. This should be really straightforward. What we're seeing here is we've got two people that have relatively different skin tones. And especially in this old man's face, we see quite a bit of variety of skin tones. Now, obviously I think this man looks fantastic. He looks beautiful. And I am in no way suggesting that he needs a skin tone correction, but for all kinds of reason, we might be asked to unify the skin tones in our image a little bit. And I think this is a great way to demonstrate how we could do this with the Hue compressor. So one thing to note right from the start is that we've got plenty of new options that we haven't had previously. One that I want to draw your attention to right now is that we now can choose the apply domain. And if you've watched my previous video about advanced workflows with Hue Compressor version one, you might already know that we can get quite different results if we apply this in a linear domain rather than a log domain. And if you need a reminder about the advantages and disadvantages of both and what you need to keep in mind, maybe just give that video a watch that will still apply. What has changed now is that you just have the option to automatically and on the fly change the method that you would like to use as long as you've set up your input transfer curve correctly. But now let's actually look at the image. And if I want to correct skin tones, the first thing I'm gonna do is turn on the highlight mode. And then I'm gonna take the radius. And in this case, I'm just gonna turn it all the way down. And now we can see that we've really isolated our skin tones. Now we can use the target. And in this case, I'm not even gonna turn on the target you on. I'm just gonna use my highlight mode here to find a good center for this adjustment where most of the skin tones are included. And in this case, I might want to increase the radius ever so slightly. I can also try to use the symmetry slider to flag off the more magenta parts of red from this adjustment while st still getting a little bit more of the yellows in there. And this looks like a really good selection. I've also pulled up my scopes here and activated the vector scope with the skin tone line enabled because this is going to really help us get the skin tones where we want them to be. Now I can basically just start increasing the strength and I'm going to do it all the way because I know YouTube can be a bit tricky in terms of seeing these subtle adjustments. I'm just going to overdo it a little bit and I'm going to turn off highlight mode for a second. And as you can see very quickly, we've unified the skin tones. We can see that now with the woman and the man have a very similar skin tone hue and overall this, the skin in this man's face seems a lot more unified. Now there's just one issue with this. And that is that right now, the way we selected our target view is basically just in order to get the correct qualification for our skin tones. And the way your hue compressor works by nature means that the target hue around which we're compressing hues and the center of our selection are the same. But sometimes we might not want that because now we've got the perfect selection of our skin tones, but the resulting skin tone that we get might seem a little bit too yellow. And this is why we've got a new slider now, which is this post shift slider. And now we can just keep an eye on the vector scope and use that slider to basically shift the hue we're compressing towards without affecting the range or the center of this target hue selection in order to refine the exact hue that our skin tones land on. And you can see we can really just push it right onto that skin tone line with the slider very quickly. And then we can obviously visually evaluate if this is where we want it to be. I think in this case, I might actually want to push it slightly more towards yellow, but there we go. This was a very simple way of unifying and correcting the skin tones in our image. And now we can dial back the final adjustment to a point where we are happy with it. So let's have a look. Here's the before and here's the after. And I think that looks really good. Okay, so let's ramp up the sophistication one step. And in this case, we've got a couple of problems that we might find difficult to solve. For one, this model obviously has beautiful skin and there's nothing wrong with it. What I can see is that the skin has a lot more of a reddish magenta hue. 
compared to our previous example. And this hue is much closer to the lips of the model as well. And we also have hair that has a similar color as the skin as well. So there's two layers of difficulty that we're now gonna have to solve. And let's see how this tool performs here. So first I'm gonna do the same turn on highlight mode and turn down the radius. And now we're gonna see that with the radius turned all the way down, we're not actually able to get hold of all the skin tones. So I'm gonna have to increase the radius quite a bit um, to get all of the skin tones in the selection. But then we have the problem that at the same time, we also get a lot of colors that we actually don't want in that selection affected. So one thing we can do is use that symmetry slider to flag off the, the greenish yellows here from that adjustment. And that works pretty well. Another thing is now that we still, if we, I can show you this, if I just turn this off and increase the strength we're getting a good adjustment, but we're clearly also affecting the lips. The lips now get kind of orangey and the hair color changes significantly as well. And in this case, this is not what we want. So we're going to have to refine this adjustment a little bit more. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the post shift slider to move the skin tones towards a better angle. And this is looking good on my vector scope. It also looks good visually to me. But now I can turn highlight mode back on and I would like to draw your attention to the sat mask slider here. And in this case, if we turn this up, that means that high saturation areas are getting flagged off of the adjustment. And since the lips and the hair in this case have a lot more saturation than the skin, if we increase the slider and I can turn on high, turn off highlight mode as well, you can see that we're restoring some of that color in the hair and in the lips as well. While we're still, if I turn this off and on again, affecting the skin tones. And this is already a much cleaner looking adjustment. This is as specific and narrow as we can get it while still being smooth and clean. And we've really nailed these skin tones that are dead on the skin tone line, but we still get a bit more redness in the lips. We can turn the sat mask up even more and we still get the original hair color preserved. So this is off and this is on. And I think this is a great demonstration of how precise and clean you can be with this tool. But let's amp up the complexity one step more and look at this image. And obviously straight away, we can see so many challenges. We've got these bright red light rods in the foreground and the background. We've got all kinds of light spill and reflections bouncing off of the model's face that can really make it very difficult for us to target these skin tones and get a clean adjustment. But let's see if we can push this tool far enough to get a clean adjustment out of this. I'm going to again just turn on highlight mode and I'm going to dial down that radius right about here and here you can see the challenge already. There's almost no way to cleanly target the skin tones without also targeting a lot of the lights in the foreground and that whole red background because the shoes are just too close together. But then again, we've got that sat mask slider and we're going to use that to flag off high saturations a little bit. And we can do that to an extent, but we're also starting to affect the skin tones because there's just too much of that light spill in the skin tones as well. So we can't go too far with it. But even so, as you can see, there's one thing that we can't target with it, and that's these light rods that we have here. And that's what we can now use the loom mask slider for. And we can flag off these very high luminance areas as well. And now we're getting a relatively clean selection. We still got some of that stuff in the selection, but that probably won't be possible to avoid. But now we've got a really clean selection. And if I turn on the strength and then I use my post shift slider again to, to try to move this closer to the skin tone line, you can see we were indeed able to get a little bit more separation between the skin tones and the reds in the background. We can try to increase that sat mask even more and that loom mask. And now we're getting to a point where this is probably really difficult to see on YouTube. I can zoom in. But we do indeed get 
better skin tones and we're really not affecting most of the background and these light rods all that much. And this is the level of precision that these new features give you when using the Hue compressor to adjust skin tones. Now let's have a brief look at the other features that are new in the Hue Compressor version 2. Of course, we can still create our own custom color palettes with this tool as well. So for example, in this case, I want to compress the colors around this complementary axis between an orangey hue and a cyan teal sort of hue. I'm going to show you what this looks like if I just do it all the way. And now in this new version, we have symmetry sliders for the separate hue angles. That means I can adjust how much hues to the left of the target hue and hues to the right of the target hue are affected. And in this case, I want to adjust the symmetry of the second hue here because I want to kind of exclude the green stuff here, the greenery in the background from the adjustment. And with highlight mode on, I can now use this slider to basically keep the radius the same length to the blue side, but make it shorter to the green side so that we're excluding the greens from the adjustment. And then I can also exclude the greens from the orange adjustment by doing the opposite to the orange vector. And now, as you will be able to see once I turn this off, the greens stay exactly where they were, while all other colors are still being compressed around that color scheme that we've selected here. And what I've now included as well is a curve overlay to give you a better idea of the effect this compressor has on your hue curve. And in this case, you can really see a complementary adjustment like this has a very complex effect on the hue curve that would be really difficult to achieve and emulate with just uh, the hue versus hue curves. And another thing to note here, as you can see, no matter how strong the adjustment is that we're dialing in, our curve always stays monotone. That means it always goes up and is never dipping down again. And this monotonicity is really important when doing hue shifts because if this curve, for example, suddenly dipped down again before it went back up, that would mean we would create hue folds, which would cause breakage in our image. And with a hue compressor like this, it's literally by nature of the adjustment impossible to create these folds. Whereas with your hue curves down here, for example, it's really, really difficult for you to know if this curve is starting to introduce folds because this curve is not organized in a diagonal line, but in a horizontal line, which really doesn't really represent anything. So that's all for today. I hope you found this useful. I hope it gave you a good idea how to use this tool. Um, I hope you like the new additions to this tool. And as you can see, I'm always very responsive to feedback. So please feel free to contact me with your questions and your suggestions and concerns, and I will do my best to address them. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, and if you want to see more about my tools, can please consider subscribing or purchasing my tools. Thank you so much. And I'll see you again very, very soon.